Generally, metals have one, two, or three electrons in their valence shell. Generally, metals have one, two, or three electrons in their valence shell. So, they represent corresponding valences. Alkali metals show one valency and alkaline earth metals show two valency. To understand metallic luster, let us first perform an activity. Collect pieces of some metals such as copper rod, iron rod, magnesium rod and aluminium rod. Carefully clean the surface of each rod by rubbing them with a sandpaper. You will observe that all rods were dull in the beginning but shine after rubbing with sandpaper. Thus, we conclude that metals shine when rubbed or polished. This property is called as metallic luster. Take a piece of sodium metal in a plate with the help of tong. Cut it with knife. It easily cuts into pieces. So, it is a soft metal. Precaution should be taken while handling sodium metal. In air, it catches fire. Iron, copper and aluminium are hard metals. Take pieces of copper, iron, zinc and gold. Strike them with a hammer. Their shape is changed. This property is called malleability. Ductility. Most metals can also be drawn into very thin wires. This physical property shown by metals is known as ductility. Take an aluminium or copper rod. Clamp this rod on a stand and fix a paper pin to the other free end of the rod using wax. Heat the rod with a spirit lamp or a burner for 10 to 15 minutes near the place where it is clamped. We observe that the pin drops as the wax melts. On further heating, the rod does not melt. Hence, we conclude that heat is transferred by the rod from one end to the other end. Electrical conductance is explained in this activity. Collect rods or wires iron, copper, aluminium, magnesium and zinc. Set up an electric circuit. Now place these metals one on one in the circuit between terminals A and B and switch on. You will observe that the bulb glows in each case but the brightness varies. We conclude that metals conduct electricity. Sonority Some metals, when struck a hard surface or with themselves, produce sound. The metals that produce a sound on striking a hard surface are said to be sonorous. Take a strip of magnesium and clean it with sandpaper. Hold it with a tong pair or holder. Bring it in contact with the flame of burner and let it burn. Collect the ashes formed and dissolve them in water. Test the resultant solution with both red and blue litmus paper one by one to check whether it is acidic or basic. You will observe that red litmus paper turns blue color. Thus, magnesium oxide is basic in nature. Metals react with oxygen to produce basic oxide. Solubility of metal oxides in water Most of the metal oxides are insoluble in water. Some of the metal oxides dissolve in water to form corresponding hydroxides which are basic in nature and are called as alkali. Rate of reactivity of metals with oxygen. All metals do not react with oxygen with the same extent. Metals like potassium and sodium react vigorously with oxygen. They catch fire when kept in the open air. When magnesium is heated to its ignition temperature in presence of air, 
it burns with a blinding white light to form magnesium oxide. Iron does not burn on heating but glows brightly. Collect the samples like sodium, magnesium, iron and copper. Put small pieces of these samples separately in china dish having cold water. Add the metals in cold water one by one. We will observe that only sodium reacts with cold water. Rest metals do not react with cold water. Perform similar activity in hot water. Only magnesium reacts with hot water and rest of the metals do not react with hot water. In case 1, take a hard glass wool soaked in water. Now put iron wire and heat the test tube. Iron reacts with the steam. A gas evolves. Bring a burning matchstick near the gas. It burns with a pop. We conclude that hot iron reacts with steam to produce hydrogen gas. In case 2, repeat the experiment with copper. Hydrogen gas is not produced. Take small pieces of magnesium in test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Take small pieces of zinc in test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Take small pieces of aluminium in test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Take small pieces of iron in test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Take small pieces of copper in test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. You will observe that all metals do not react with acids at the same rate. The order of reactivities of different metals with the same acid follow the decreasing order as magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron and copper. Let's take up reaction of same metal with different acids. Take zinc metal in test tube. Add dilute hydrochloric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles. Take zinc metal in test tube. Add dilute sulfuric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Take zinc metal in test tube. Add dilute phosphoric acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. Take zinc metal in test tube. Add dilute acetic acid. Observe the rate of formation of bubbles carefully. You will observe that rate of formation of bubbles is fast with hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid and slow with phosphoric acid and acetic acid. Take a clean copper wire and an iron nail. In test tube A, take a solution of iron sulfate and put the copper wire in it. In test tube B, take a solution of copper sulfate and put the iron nail in it. Leave them undisturbed for 20 minutes. In tube A, no chemical reaction takes place. In tube B, chemical reaction has taken place. Iron reacted with copper sulfate solution and displaced copper from it 
we conclude that a more reactive metal reacts with salt solution of less reactive metal. Metals occur in nature in free state as well as in combined state. Gold, silver, platinum and copper metals occur in free state in nature. In combined state, metals occur as oxides, halides and sulfides. Reactivity series of metals is given here in decreasing order. The metals like K, Na, Ca, Mg and Al are so reactive that they are never found in nature as a free element. They are extracted from their ores by electrolysis method. Metals like Zn, Fe, Pb, etc. are moderately reactive. They are extracted from their ores by carbon reduction method. Gold and silver are found in free state. Several steps are involved in the extraction of pure metal from its ores. The three main steps are concentration or enrichment of ores, reduction and purification or refining of metal. Concentrated ores are found in three states that are highly reactive metals, moderately reactive metals and low reactive metals. The highly reactive metals are purified by electrolysis. The ores of moderately reactive metals are carbonate and sulfide. On calcinations, carbonate ores get converted in metal oxide. It can be purified by reduction method. On roasting, sulfide ores get converted in metal oxides. Extraction of mercury from cinnabar is explained here. Mercury is isolated from its ore cinnabar mercuric sulfide, HGS, by heating it in the air. When cinnabar is heated in air, it is converted into mercuric oxide, HGO, and sulfur dioxide, SO2, is given out. On further heating, the so-formed mercuric oxide is reduced to mercury and oxygen is given out. Calcination of calamine ores converts a carbonate ore into metal oxide as shown here. When sulfide ores of zinc are heated in presence of O2, it is converted in zinc oxide. This process is called roasting. Metals lying high up in the reactivity series are obtained by electrolytic reduction. In this method, the metals are deposited at the cathode whereas chlorine is liberated at the anode as shown here. Thus, metals like sodium, magnesium and calcium are obtained by the electrolysis of their fused chlorides. Extraction of aluminium from alumina is explained here. Here you can see cathode is inner graphite or carbon lining of the cell. Anode is thick graphite or carbon rods attached to copper clamps dipped into the fused electrolyte that is fused alumina and cryolite as shown here. When current is applied, chemical reactions take place at anode. O2 minus ions convert in oxygen molecules and electrons. These O2 molecules combine with carbon and forms carbon dioxide gas which escapes out at cathode. Al3 plus ions capture electrons produced by anode as it gets converted into aluminium. The molten aluminium gets settled down at the bottom and comes out on opening the tap as shown here. Electrolytic refining of copper Electrolytic refining of copper is based on the process of electrolysis. The apparatus used in this process is shown in the frame. The process is carried out in a suitable steel or glass vessel known as electrolytic tank. Two metallic copper rods are dipped in the copper sulfate solution kept in the steel vessel. These two metallic copper rods are connected to the two terminals of the battery with the help of metallic wires. These metallic rods or plates allow the passage of current and are called electrodes. 
the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery is called anode, that is, the impure copper metallic rod, while the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery is called cathode, that is, the pure copper metallic rod. On passing electric current through the solution by inserting the key in the circuit and thus closing the circuit, the ions are attracted by the oppositely charged electrodes. As a result, copper 2 plus ions, cations, from the anode, leaving the impurities as anode mud inside the electrolytic tank, move towards cathode while anions, sulfate ions, move towards anode. This movement of ions in the solution is known as electrolytic or ionic conduction and constitutes flow of current through the solution. The copper 2 plus ions get reduced and deposited at the cathode pure copper metallic rod, while the impure copper metal anode slowly starts disappearing as electricity flows through electrolytic conduction.